told myself I wasn't going to do this, but I did it. Uh, here's R2 with uh, some of the greebles put in there. Um, all I've done to the greebles at this point is sanded some of the edges to get them to fit into the slots. Um, it appears that most of them are just a tad too big to fit in the slots. So they're not all the way pushed in because I don't know if I'd be able to pull them back out. Um, basically I just kind of sanded the back edges to get them to go in. Uh, for example, here's one of the coin returns, the back edges here on a few pieces. It's just a little thicker on the back. And so sanded down all the back and that was let me push it in, but they don't go in all the way. So a little bit more sanding. I can see on this one it's the top. It's a little bit raised at the top. So yeah, haven't. it's the first time I've had these out of the box since I printed them a long time ago. So um, this door is held in with a piece of painter's tape behind it. The others just kind of sit in there. Again, they have not been finished at all. I can see I have quite a bit of work on these long doors. Um, for whatever reason, that side is okay, but this side has got print artifacts that are going to have to be cleaned up. My utility arms are in the garage. I'm starting to put some filler on them to get them smooth. Uh, I'm not happy with this dome ring that's not, in, not lining up well with the body, which I'm not sure if that's the ring or the body. I'm thinking it's the ring more than the body, just because the top ring, which I can't show you now without pulling all this stuff off, the top ring, which is, this is where it starts to get confusing you've got the body and then the top ring is the flat ring that goes around the top of the body and is recessed so that it ends up about it ends up the same height as the rest of the body and the lazy susan fits on it and then this dome ring um is inset so that the Lazy Susan fits up into it. And then you've got this ring and then the dome. I know I'm going to redo my dome. Like I've said before, I printed this on uh, the first 3D printer I had and had some issues with it. And so there's some areas that I just cannot get round enough. Um, they are pretty much in the back. And seeing it on here and knowing how much how many hours I've got into trying to get this where I'm gonna be happy with it, it's it's just a shame that I'm I'm gonna start over because it's it's pretty good in the front area, but when you get around to the back there's a couple areas that I just can't get round enough. But yeah, I'm I'm a little bit worried about this ring. Because as it goes around, you can see the body there is jutting out for quite a ways back and no matter how I adjust it it's not fitting uh, very well on the body and again I think it's an issue with the ring and not an issue with the body but I'm not 100% sure um, I don't expect the final result to be 100% perfect as far as lining up but this this is pretty far off in some places so not thrilled with that but I'm kind of thrilled that just with a little bit of sanding I was able to get uh, those greebles in now the, these vent pieces fit in with no sanding the coin slots fit in with no sanding uh, this vent here fit in with no sanding but 
those and the uh, hex piece down there. Those needed a little bit of, well, actually the hex piece didn't need any sanding either. It was just these, these two down here that were the main culprit. Um, here again on the door, you can see how rough the finish on this door is here because it's literally, I took it off the printer, cut off the helper discs and that was it. I haven't done any trimming on it or finishing at all. But the way it prints is like this at an angle like that on the print bed, which is odd to me why as I said, this side of the door looks good, but you get over to this side and I've got print artifacting going on. I could understand it if it was printed like this, because as it gets taller it would tend to wobble, but printed like this with helper discs on the base. And I might have even had a couple uh, thin supports on the edges it's, it's been a while, I can't quite remember, but how one side turned out different than the other side is kind of, I mean, that's got to be some kind of printer alignment issue where I don't have it quite set up right. So hopefully I'll be able to take care of that and get that to, to look nice. But yeah, um, I wasn't going to do this simply because I knew it would make me say, darn, I should just keep on working on that dome and just get this thing finished. But I really, really don't think any more hours spent on that dome is going to get it to the point where I'm going to be happy with it as I would if I reprinted it. Um, there's the area in question. It's high. Well, you can see it's high where it's white here. It's low where there's the reddish uh, Bondo glazing putty. And over here, it's a little bit off as well. So, yeah, I just I really think that what I should do is just bite the bullet and print a new one. Unless maybe I get the body done and decide that the thing has got so many things that don't line up right that I'm just going to make it <laughs> battle damaged and then having a dent in his head won't be such a big deal. But I've used the two-part Bondo body filler. I've used the glazing putty just trying to get this seam brought out and this one inset more. And it's just driving me crazy that I can't can't get it where I'm happy with it and the reason why is it's you know it's his dome and it's going to be painted silver and that's really going to show anything that's not quite right so I think it will be it would be definitely a visible dip right in there and it's right on a seam so that would make it you know even more visible here too it seems to go kind of low here and then come up a bit high here and yes so anyway said i wouldn't do it but i did took a picture so i could just have a picture people ask me you know hey aren't you working on that what status are you at so i decided to take a picture with the stuff kind of plugged into it so I could show my friends and then figured, well, I might as well make a video. I got the thing all set up here. And don't mind the mess. This is almost all R2-D2 and my printer, right? There's my, moved my Prusa from where it was on the other side of the room over to this side. Underneath there, I've got some printer parts and filament and spray cans there and sanding and clamps and some empty Amazon boxes from ordering parts over there and a box full of more parts over there and center leg underneath the uh, R2 there. There's one empty container 
that I managed to put enough parts together and or at least get them out and in the process of painting and prepping them that I emptied one container finally and then this container uh, where the foot drives are is got that's where the boxes were all these the greebles came from also that box is full of the electronics today I have um, speakers showing up I've got the lights for the data port I've got those bought them off of uh, the guy from uh, Michael Badley's Facebook group and I am not sure his name is Ben Reese I think um, I believe he's is he from Germany Netherlands um, yeah so the last letter in his name is not an S it's a it's a letter from another language and I think it's Ben Reese but anyway I ordered a set of built lights for this plus the um, charging port and there's the charging port right there um, the thesis for the dome I built myself there in the other box down there with electronics um, I decided just to order these already built just because so many LEDs in the thesis lights to build that thing that I decided I'd just go ahead and order this thing just pre-built comes with the circuit boards and the for both of these and controller and everything you just pretty much hook up the power to it and away you go so uh, I can hear my doorbell ringing so I'll, I'll cut the video off here